this is Price Heedley of BigTrends.com. I wanted to share with you some of my favorite methods for finding the big trends in stocks and options uh, with using the Metastock platform as we've just recently launched a uh, Big Trends toolkit using all my favorite indicators in the Metastock platform as an add-on we call Big Trends Toolkit. So let's uh, go and share with you some uh, recent indicators that are showing you some very interesting things on stocks uh, to the upside and the downside in the current volatile market. One of my favorite indicators is called acceleration bands. It's an indicator I developed really geared to find trends that are starting to speed up and allow you to find faster moves both to the upside and the downside. This is a, particularly important when you talk about moving averages because moving averages uh, you know, really will tend to be uh, a good general trend tool, but the, you'll notice that the best stocks will tend to not come back to test those same major moving averages. Uh, you know, I, I got this experience back in the early 90s when stocks were just starting to accelerate as we were going through that decade-long bull market in the 90s, and you had a situation in which the great leaders like Cisco Systems, Microsoft, Walmart, Home Depot, um, International Game Technology, these names that were really big growth stocks. If you go and look at any of those charts, you'll see that they really almost look parabolic when you look out over many, many years of data, and you've got to have a way to get back on the best stocks. The best performers are the ones that's going to carry your portfolio to much, much bigger gains. And the same thing on the downside. You know, when stocks are starting to accelerate to the downside, we know that stocks move down faster than they move up. And you get these kind of waterfall declines, as I'll show you in some examples here today. So, uh, you know, I started testing the idea of adaptive bands that could adjust based on more recent price action. I looked at uh, Bollinger Bands, uh, uh, Bomar Bands, uh, Keltner channels, you name it. I've looked at a lot of different types of bands. But what I found was most effective for me was the acceleration bands idea. This was a unique kind of a tweak to the bands concept in which I'm still seeking to encompass 95% of the price action within the bands, but then try to find the other 5% that are happening outside the bands. This is a great example of a recent uh, stock that's just gotten hammered along with the subprime mortgage mess uh, and the credit crunch that we're seeing happening in these uh, mortgage uh, providers. And this is American Home Mortgage, ticker symbol AHM. And what you see here is we have these three green bands. Uh, the middle band is just a simple 20-day moving average. So there's nothing fancy about this middle line within the bands. But what you notice is that the upper and lower bands are, you know, they're smooth. Uh, typically in a trading range type environment, you're going to see them contain the action for a stock. But when you get a breakdown in a stock like what happened for AHM back here in mid to late February, where we see not just one close below like what happened in earlier February below the lower band, but two straight closes underneath the band, that's where you can see this kind of an acceleration, this waterfall happening to the downside. Uh, now you can see that if we go back into the bands, typically that will, will be a first sign that that acceleration to the downside is ending. So you can see where you get like a fake out signal like in early April, um, well then you get stopped out for a small loss if you're just using the bands. Later in this uh, presentation I'm going to show you how to actually use confirming indicators I've developed to confirm if it's a valid acceleration breakdown. But this is the first key piece of the puzzle. What you notice is then AHM was stuck in this range May and June. You know, the market had been a pretty good bull market. AHM has been a clear laggard. And that's why you have to get out of the mentality of buying dips on stocks that are way down. A lot of people look for quote-unquote value, but if you thought this stock was a value at 20 and you think it's starting to stabilize, well, you can see when it breaks down, not only under the prior lows at 20, but breaks down for two straight days at the beginning of July under the lower acceleration band uh, here at about $18, that started this acceleration process where then here in late July, the company announced that they were going to be shutting their doors, declaring bankruptcy. Uh, as they had, uh, you know, not gotten their funding, and so from that perspective, you see the stock's been a major mover to the downside. So, you know, this methodology, both in bull markets to above the upper bands and in bear markets below the lower bands, will show you which stocks are really accelerating, breaking to the upside or the downside. And especially for options trading, we're interested in making the maximum amount of move. You know, a 17-point gain in a month is really ideal for options trading. So 
when I talk about options trading, I'm actually looking at using a fairly conservative strategy is the one I most prefer and recommend that you get started with, which is the in-the-money strategy, where we're trying to substitute for the stock, but also still have a, a good portion of the option that we buy be already worth something from the start. So the, even if nothing happens, we're not going to get hurt too much by the uh, by a sideways move. Uh, and so if, while we're waiting for that next major acceleration of the trend to kick in, we don't get faked out by a, by a little bit of time decay. Well, here's how that works. We're trying to buy an in-the-money option saying we want to get rid of as much time value as we can. We can't get rid of all of it, but we're going to focus on the intrinsic value of the option. Let me show you an example of how to calculate intrinsic and time value. Let's say that you were going to sell short 100 XYZ shares, just some hypothetical stock, say for $56.60, some portion of this $5,600 and change is going to get tied up as margin in your account. You don't really want to tie up all that margin. So instead, what you could do is you could say, well, let me buy one, say, October 60 put. Here we are in August, maybe a couple months out, buy uh, an in-the-money option. What does a 60 put mean? It means you have a right to sell the stock, XYZ, at a price of $60 even that's good through the third Friday in October. Well, guess what? Right now, the, if the stock's below 60, that option has intrinsic value. How much intrinsic value? Well, if you have a right to sell at 60, you could go in the open market and buy it back at $56.60 and pocket that difference of $340. You know, but, so why do you pay $470 for the option? Well, the other one thirty um, difference is the time value portion. So, in this case, of the four hundred seventy dollars you're going to have to pay, and again, this is before commission, so you have to pay a commission as well here. Um, you know, and again, these are just hypothetical examples for educational purposes, but the ideas are the same as you go into looking for live trades. That you pay four seventy, but then three forty of that's intrinsic value and that the other hundred and thirty dollars is time that means 130 over 470 is about 28 percent is time and about 72 percent is intrinsic value that means that if nothing happens this thing just flat lines all the way at 5660 all the way until the october expiration on the third friday in october it's the last trading day for the october options well, then you're going to get a situation in which you'd lose the time premium, but you'd still keep the 340, so you'd only lose 130 of the 470 or 28%. So the time portion, if it's dead flat, that's going to be your risk. Of course, if you're wrong about the stock going down, if you buy a put, you expect the stock to drop because uh, that right to sell at 60 gets more valuable the more it goes down. Uh, then, you know, if he goes up, you're going to be losing something based on price risk. But we'll talk about how to manage that as well. Well, if XYZ goes to, say, $50, down from 5660 to 50 before mid-October, then you have a situation in which the short stock would gain 11.7%. Uh, but the in the money option, if you if you have a right to sell at sixty, now we're down at fifty. What's that difference? That's ten points. You could buy it back at fifty, pocket the ten point difference. That's on every hundred shares. That's a thousand dollars just intrinsic value. You paid four seventy for it, which means that now you've gained before commissions, of course. But you know, on a gross basis, you've gained five hundred thirty dollars, or one hundred and twelve percent on each contract controlling each hundred shares. So you can see the leverage of buying a put in this example for just a little under 12% move in the stocks, about nine and a half times the the leverage in the option. So that's why I tend to advocate riding uh, stock tr trends with options for the bigger moves, usually over a period of days or weeks instead of intraday uh, getting in and out just during a single day because you're not really leveraging the power of a strong trend enough compared to if you can find a bigger trend, you're going to make much more money and leverage the options appropriately. Take advantage of what options were created for, which is to allow you to both leverage yourself and also protect the rest of your capital. Because remember, you've only put in 470. You've got a big chunk of this uh, many thousands of dollars that you can just sit on in, in, a, uh, in a cash substitute, so like a money market, so that way you're not exposed. Uh, if you're really wrong about the stock going way, way up, the put option is a better buy than shorting the stock. If the stock goes to 70, you're going to lose uh, over $1,000 shorting the stock, but you cannot lose more than you put into it when you buy an option. And again, options aren't suitable for everyone. You need to educate yourself about options first before you start trading options. But this gives you a good feel for just a, a real simple, easy strategy that's manageable risk and, and also has uh, much more reward than risk if you let the trend run uh, majorly to your favor. Okay, so then we start to look at other filters, and another 